This video investigates the motion of a particle with mass as it radially falls inwards towards the mass that is the source of the surrounding Schwarzschild geometry. It considers the observations made by three different observers of the particle's motion, beginning with the derivation of an expression for the energy per unit of rest mass of this particle. So here's the situation here. You have a particle of mass M0, starts at rest far from the mass M, mass M here, which is the source of the Schwarzschild space-time around it, and far at infinity, or very far away, um, the mass M0 starts at rest and freely falls radially inwards. So it responds only to the gravitational force, to no other forces, and it starts from rest and freely falls inwards. Now, we have an observer at infinity, a second observer at R1, so an observer up here at infinity, or in other words, very, very far away, and an observer at R1, and an observer who's traveling with the particle down this radial path. Now, far away from the source, the Schwarzschild field asymptotically decays away to the flat space-time, the Minkowski space-time, in the limit as R goes to infinity. All right, so the equation that governs radial motion in the Schwarzschild space-time, as we saw in the last video on geodesic motion, Schwarzschild geodesic motion, motion the video, that video we produced this result here. This is for pure radial motion, all right? Now, far from the mass M, a particle of rest mass M0, initially at rest, falls towards M. So we have, at that initial point, R equals R subscript infinity, far away, and dr d tau is zero. It starts from rest. Now, this leads to an expression for the energy of the particle per unit of mass at the point of release. And that comes from up here, because what we're doing is setting the r d tau equal to zero, so that's equal to zero. That leaves us with this object here, we set that equal to zero, and we solve for the energy per unit rest mass, squared, is this object here. Okay. Next bit. Our equation of radial motion is now, that's the equation on the previous page, now we're going to substitute in for this business here, e squared on m0 squared, and when we uh, for this whole thing actually. When we substitute that in, we get c squared minus 2gm on r infinity minus c squared plus that. c squared's cancel. And then we're left, if we just rearrange that, divide through by 2, we get a half dr d tau all squared, and then factorize the uh, factor out the, the gravitational constant and the mass, of the source mass of the Schwarzschild field, capital M, take that outside, and we get something that looks very familiar from Newtonian mechanics. Now, this result shows how the loss of gravitational potential energy per unit mass is converted to kinetic energy as the particle falls from rest at infinity and falls radially inwards towards capital M. <coughs> Alright, from a previous video we found that the uh, energy per unit rest mass was this object here, that was in the last video I referred to a moment ago, and that tells us that C times dt d tau is this object here. Now, from earlier, we have that dr d tau all squared is this object, and that implies that if we square root both sides, we have this here. And we take the negative square root because it's falling inwards. It's, its distance from the source is decreasing, so we have the negative sign there. Now, the fall velocity for this particle is mu mu is dx mu d tau. That's that object there. And we, we evaluate these. We know what c dt d tau is and dr d tau. We know what they are. And of course, we're only talking radial direction, so the angular direction is zero there. There's no motion in the angular direction, it's pure radial. And that gives us a fall velocity for the particle falling inwards in the radial direction only. And here is the fall velocity. Next bit. Now we can attempt to determine the behavior of the particle's proper time, measured by a clock it carries with it, and its coordinate time, as measured by the observer at infinity, by separating differentials and integrating. So we have d tau, which is minus dr, and this object here. So just from the previous page, we took dr, d tau, and then we just separated the differentials here and put the coordinate r's on one side, d tau by itself. Now we can uh, simplify this by dropping the constants, making it easier to determine the behavior of tau as a function of r. What's going to happen is we're going to integrate this, and leaving the constants in creates a very difficult, messy integral. And so, Removing it means that we're just going to look at the asymptotic behavior of the 
are caught in the variable. So how does that behave? We want to look at the asymptotic behavior of this. So we don't really need the constants. All they really do is just rescale the graph. So what we'll do as, as a reasonable substitute is remove those and we'll just look at the behavior of 2gm on r and the square root of all that over dr. And we can then integrate that between two variables, r infinity, where it starts up to r. We use a dummy variable dr dash over r dash. And when we integrate that, <coughs> we get our expression is this object here. Okay, removing the constant just means we really can now look at the behavior of R, the asymptotic behavior of R, and that's what we're trying to get at. And we'll look at some things there with that. Now, the particle speed can be expressed as dr dt. Now, this is a coordinate dr dt. This is the speed as the observer at infinity uh, records it, measures it to be dr d tau times d tau dt is this object here. Just multiply that by, we know this object, we just need to take a reciprocal of it. We do that we get this object here now that again leads to if we separate the differentials dr and dt we get the integral of zero to t dt dash dummy variable uh, and again we've dropped out these constants to simplify the integral so we can get at the behavior of r and uh, that should be an r dash there by the way to simply and just look at the behavior of how r behaves that's really what the asymptotic behavior is what we want to get at so we don't want to complicate it by all these constants all the constant do is just rescale the graph about them. Next bit. So that gives us this quite formidable looking result here. Okay. And r infinity and r the variable. Now this is a fixed value r infinity. It's where the object, where the particle starts. Coordinate. Location of where the, article, where the particle starts. It's journey. There's two things to notice. As r approaches zero, the proper time, that's the time measured by the particle carrying its own clock, so the particle carries a clock with it, measures that time, that's, that is tau, the proper time of the particle, it records that the, according to the particle's own clock, it reaches r equals zero in a finite amount of time. r infinity is finite, that's where the particle started from rest, and this is a finite value. So according to the clock carried by the particle, it says it reaches r, it approaches uh, r equals zero in a finite amount of time. On the other hand, the observer at infinity, using coordinates r and t, records as r approaches the Schwarzschild radius, t goes off to infinity. And that happens over here because as r here approaches 2gm on c squared, this becomes 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and this blows up, this goes off to infinity because it becomes a number over, uh, over a very, very small number, and this then blows up because the log of a um, very large number is large. So it's tending towards infinity. So as R approaches Schwarzschild radius, we see that T goes off to infinity. So the observer at infinity, far away, observes the particle taking an infinite amount of time, or tending towards infinity, to reach the Schwarzschild radius, the mass. So for an observer travelling with the particle, there passes a finite amount of time before r equals zero is reached, and for the observer at infinity, or just far away, they um, see his or her proper time is the coordinate time t, and they conclude that it takes an infinite amount of time for the particle to reach the Schwarzschild radius of the source mass, m. Right? So there's, there's the observations according of the time taken to reach the, the uh, mass m for the particle in falling, according to observer at infinity or far away, and according to the particle itself. Now there's one other thing we need to look at. Now let's place an observer at R1 here and ask ourselves what they see as the particle passes by. Right, the Schwarzschild metric is this object here, just to remind ourselves, is equal to minus c squared d tau squared. Now the observer is stationary, this is the observer at R1, is stationary at coordinate radius r and measures for a coordinate time interval dt, that should actually be r1 there, a coordinate time interval of dt, a proper time interval of minus c squared dt, 1 squared is minus this object here. Um, this is proper time here. Now for this observer at coordinate radius r, their proper time we'll call dt1, right? And 
that should be a dt1 there as well. All right. And so their proper time interval is dt1 equals this of the square root of this times dt. dt is the coordinate time for the observer at infinity. And this is the interval, the time interval, coordinate interval for the observer at r1. And we get that from here because um, if you have a look at it here, uh, it, all the observer r1 is at a fixed location. So dr is 0, d theta, d phi is all 0. And we're left with just this object here is equal to this. Now the proper time tau we're talking about here is not the one uh, carried, measured by the clock that the particle carries with itself, but we want the proper time for this observer here who is at R1, for this stationary observer, and so we'll call that time, not d tau, but dt1. And then we see from this expression that that is equal to that. Okay, uh, divide through 1 negative c squared, we get rid of that minus, we get rid of that c squared, then take square root of both sides and we have dt1 as this object. Now for a coordinate interval dr, that same person measures a proper radial distance equal to ds is dr1, is this object here again for the metric, the measurement occurs at the same time, dt is 0, and uh, d theta d phi is 0, and we're left with just ds squared is this object here, but for us ds will be dr1, the proper uh, interval measured by the observer at r1, proper distance. All right. For the stationary observer at R1, the velocity of the radially infalling particle is then dr1 dt1, is this, we found earlier, divided by this, and when we perform that operation with this object here, now we also know what dr dt is, according to the observer out at infinity, which is all of this, that I put there, so we've got this times this, which is this thing here, there it is, all that, and when we work that through, this cancels that out, and we put minus this object here. Okay, so according to the stationary observer at R1, the velocity of the radially infalling particle is this. And we can go a little bit further. And as the particle approaches the Schwarzschild radius, the observer at R1, there should be a subsequent one there, sorry about that, finds that its velocity is approaching that of the speed of light c. So in the limit, as R approaches 2 gm on c squared, the Schwarzschild radius of this object here, the limit of all of this, when we substitute that into the r coordinate there, there it is, put it in, it gives us c squared here, that cancels with a minus c squared there, and we take the square root of e squared on the rest mass squared times c squared, that gives us e on m0c, times this object out here, now the rest mass m0 is cancelled, the e's cancel, one of the c's cancel here, and you're left with just the c here, minus, um, the direction is inwards, towards the source decreasing, so negative direction, and what you have here, is this object, according to the observer at R1, appears to approach the speed of light. As it gets closer to the Schwarzschild radius, its speed, its velocity is faster and faster in approaching that of light. So that's what the observer at R1 sees. And that is that.